Isolation day 55, Tuesday the 12th of May. I hope everyone's well and you're looking after yourselves. Let's have a look at chronometer first and you can see my food consumption for day two of the transition from keto to low fat plant-based whole food. What we'll do after that is then we'll look at the decision tree and as I mentioned on yesterday's vlog, I wasn't quite up to speed with exactly what I should be doing, but let's look at that anyway. Actually, before we get there, if you take a look here, you can see these are the breakfasts that the book tells me that I should be eating because I am on meal plan two, which is for high baseline insulin resistance. So you can see week one breakfast only, day two kale and lentil breakfast bowl. This is the 12th of May chronometer overview of my food consumption. This was my breakfast, which was the kale and lentil breakfast bowl. 3.9 grams of fat, 20 grams of carbs. Lunch, five grams of fat, 50 grams of carbs. For evening meal, I had Linda McCartney vegetarian sausages and some carrots, some cauliflower, some cabbage, peas, 7.9 grams of fat, 42 grams of carbs. Overall, the full day, 16.8 grams of fat, 142 grams of carbs. You can also see vitamins are pretty good, lots of green there, and minerals not too bad as well. I'd like to talk you through the 24 hour decision tree. And it began at 4.13 a.m., 4.3. I took eight grams of carbs at that time to Bring, bring my blood sugars up, 6.49, and bear in mind that the previous day, as I've already shown you, had been, um, had been low throughout the night from nine o'clock in the evening all the way through the, through the night. That was the highest it's, it had been. 6.7, 6.5, happy with those, happy with 5.1. Had the breakfast, which was the, the kale and lentil breakfast bowl. Fat was 3.9, predicted carb to insulin ratio was 16. Now, the injected insulin was 1.25. The way that the Mastering Diabetes team does this is you look a couple of hours after, which I did, 5.3, happy with that. But, you know, and just over an hour after that, you're supposed to look at two and three hours. So this is three hours and 20 minutes. Hadn't eaten anything in between. My blood was at 3.4. So that's a hypo. So I took eight grams of carbs. Now, on the the program they do advise and actually most people advise to take 15 grams of carbs but when you're low carb 15 grams of carbs has a dramatic effect on your blood sugars and so i'm always a bit concerned about doing that and i'll, I'll you know i've got a few examples of that one that i'll show you tomorrow actually um but hypo i took eight grams of carbs and you can see a couple of hours later, it's a 4.7. So it's not too bad. It's just coming out of hypo at that time. If we just pop back here, this was 16 grams per unit for the 20 grams. And obviously it went low. So the way that um, that you're advised to, to do this is whatever the correction dose was, and if that gets you back within range, add the carbohydrates, divide it by the initial insulin that was given and that will give you a new carb ratio so the carb ratio at 1034 is 22 grams not 16 grams that's good to know i have adjusted my carb ratio to 22 grams now if we move on to, to lunch 4.7 lunch 50 grams of carbs now that's an awful lot of carbs for me to take. Now my expectation was that my blood sugars would increase, but actually I had rye bread with salad and chickpeas, didn't, 5.1. And then again, so that was two hours, 5.1, that was within range, 6.15 though, 3.2. So I'm in hypo again. This was where I made the error. This is why it's always good to listen to all of the modules before you uh, you jump in and just dive ahead. Because what I should have done here, and what everyone should do actually is the advice, which makes sense, is if you're in hypo, you should wait till your blood sugar gets high enough to be back within range to then eat your dinner. But 
I was quite hungry at that time. Um, so I ate I ate my dinner um, at 6.21. At the time it was 3.2, even though I'd taken the, the carbs. And 14 grams per unit. And you can see what happens. Low, low, low. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of jelly babies. 12, 8 and 12. Maybe I should consider doing the 15 grams. But look, the, I think the takeaway from here is this, because that works quite well. You know, I understand the method and the manner in which they're adjusting a carb, that, uh, and hopefully you understand the manner in which I'm adjusting the carb to insulin ratio. What I've done here is completed the 24 hour decision tree. And you can see 156 grams of carbs, 33.975 units of insulin gives you 4.6 carbs per unit of insulin. So it was 4.1 yesterday, 4.6. I think it is it is increasing. Is it a concern how often I'm going low? Yes. Is this what I expected? Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, this is everything that the book promised, you know, the and uh, the guidance promised. I just wasn't quite expecting it to happen this swiftly so let's see how it goes tomorrow what conclusions can we take from that i think the reality is that my bloods are going low too often but as i mentioned is that unusual was that not expected i don't think so i think it was expected the um the issue that i've got is how i manage that and how do i stay on top of it what i have to do is i have to use that decision tree to make the decisions for me and to enable me to make informed decisions rather than just reactive decisions if i follow the rules then i think this will be a uh, a process that i can really um i can really get some value from and I'll be able to be a lot more comfortable with my blood sugars. I will catch up with you tomorrow to give you a full overview of the following day. And what I'll also do is I'll give you sight of the, um, the next module in the Mastering Diabetes Do-It-Yourself program, which I didn't give you yesterday. Okay, have a good night. Goodbye.